This is Robert with DC Trolling Motor, and I'm uh, doing another step in my series to upgrade my batteries and my electrical system for my 24 volt trolling motors. And down here, we put in the lithium battery already, and we put in the Victron 24 volt charger. And of course, there's a fuse in there. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the Renogy battery monitor. Now I keep wanting to say voltmeter or battery meter, but it's a, a monitor so you can get an idea of what's coming in and out of your battery. And it gives you a really good idea of where you're at. So you know that if you've had a long day, you know, to turn your battery off at a good time. And battery monitors are important for lithium batteries but lithium batteries have safety systems built in so this is more of a for my benefit only as far as like agm batteries and stuff like that a safety like a battery protect is a really good idea but also you can get an idea of where you're at beforehand with one of these kind of monitors now we'll be installing something different for the AGM battery bank, but since this is my primary bank, I'm gonna be working on this. So what this is, and I'll start with that, is this is a 500 amp battery monitor. It works from 10 volts to 120 volts. In the package, it includes, first, the most important thing is the display screen. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. I don't normally do this until it's completely installed, but just because we're doing the video, I'd like you to be able to get a better look at it. And I'll just try to tilt it back a little bit. And then I'll also pop a picture up here for you so you can kind of see a close up of uh, a picture that I took for my last video where I did the testing of the new AGM batteries that are going in as my secondary bank. So on the back of this, it has all the specifications and the model number is RBM 500 battery monitor. And it tells you right here exactly what's going on. Here is a plug that plugs in to the shunt. Let's go ahead and talk about the shunt. The reason that this little battery monitor is so powerful is because of this shunt. This shunt has the capability of monitoring up to 500 amps. Now, I have no way of testing that, so I have to go with what they say. But I have tested it for 30 amps and it's working just fine at 30. Now, I'm gonna be pushing it a little bit above that. I think my maximum is 56 on the trolling motor, but I never run my trolling motor at maximum. If I get up to anything above, say seven on the speed setting, I will always kick on my gas motor for assistance. Uh, but this thing here is uh, pretty heavy duty here. First thing I want to mention is that this is a simple power wire. Everything here that you need is included to install it and with the notable exception of one thing. So this here is a power wire. This will go to your battery. There's two connections here. You can use either one of them and you simply need a uh, large eyeglass screwdriver to reach in here and tighten this down. And then it all comes with the amount of wire that you would need. I believe that this is three feet of wire. So you can have it that far away from the battery. You don't want to extend this or add to it. You just want to use what you have here. Um, if you really need it a little bit longer, you could probably make your own, but I would not add to this. So next, in the package, is a package of screws which includes three screws that you use to attach the shunt to the location that we're putting it in and that will be right down in here so it's mildly exposed because we'll be adding another device over here and we want to be able to see this we don't necessarily need to maintain it it won't require much so i'm going to set this down for a second the next thing is the control panel communication wire. It has all the wires in there that you need all in one, and this should be 20 feet. So on a normal boat, you should be able to run this just about anywhere. Now, I went back and forth on whether to put this on my dashboard or whether to put this 
at another location. But the problem that I have is with all the equipment that I have, including my electronics, the dashboard's a little full and I would have had to add a mounting bracket to get it up above the steering wheel to consider putting it there. So we'll be running this from the shunt where it plugs in here and then to the back of the panel where the other end will plug in here. And that's it. There won't be any other wires connected to the panel. Now the one wire that I needed was a jumper wire to go from the shunt to the battery. The wire that currently goes to the battery will be going to the shunt. Now I'll show you this and you might be able to see it in one of the pictures. There is a B minus here, which is the battery negative, and a P minus, which is the power draw negative. So that will go to the trolling motor or whatever you're powering. And this goes at the closest location directly between the battery and the power source. Recommended at about seven inches, but if you need to go a little further than that on a negative cable, you, you definitely can do that. Now you can buy these cables pre-made, but I just go in my garage and I just, I have all of the terminals and the sh heat shrink. And you've seen me in some of my other videos making cables. I just pulled these from the test bench that I used and I'll be using one of the two on, that I used on that for my last video. Now, the one other thing that this does not include is a place to mount your display monitor. And so what I did was I bought an external plug mount. So what this is, is that I don't know if you've ever seen like an industrial building where you see plugs um, or light switches that are outside of the wall. So you'll see a little metal pipe and then there'll be a light switch connected to it. That way they don't have to put anything inside the wall. Well, I just went and bought one of those and then here's the mounting bracket for it. And this attaches there and then I'll be able to insert the monitor there. This video is not really about that. This video is about the other parts. So let's go ahead and uh, get on installing some of those parts. I'm just going to set this aside and we'll go from there. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install my shunt. So I'm going to use a couple of these screws. There comes with three of them and there's a place to mount all three, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to get three of them in without taking everything apart. So I might come back and do that a little bit later. So first thing I'm going to do is find the location that I want to do it. And I'm going to put it right here <clears throat> opposite of the strap. That way I have good access to it. And then we'll just take this in there and attach it. Now we have this power wire and I have it bundled up with the twist tie that came in the kit to hold some of the wires. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this and see if it will fit on here. And it looks like it will. All right, so we've got that tightened down and I'm just going to go ahead and return the cover back on here. So the next step is, is that we're going to disconnect the battery and the charge cable. Both of those have to go through the shunt to get a proper reading of output and input. So when I was moving the negative wires from the battery over to the shunt, I had a small problem and the shunt is a 3 8 bolt and the battery terminals are much smaller than that. The charging wire ring terminal was smaller than 3 8 So I had to swap that out and I'm not gonna go over that with you in detail. If you can see this at all, the ring terminal is just a standard crimped on connector. So I was able to go into my shop and find one that would fit directly onto the 3 8 bolt. It's just slightly bigger than 3 8 but it's going to work fine for a low power output. Once I've got it on there finger tight, I'll just put the wrench on and tighten it off. Before I tighten it completely, I can put the wires in the final position that I want them in. I'd like the negative cable pointing straight out. 
when we're all done with the project, I will move all the slack out of here and zip tie any of the extra back behind me along the hull of the boat. Now the next step will be to add a negative cable. Now I had a couple of negative cables and I'm hoping that one of them is long enough to complete the connection. It looks like this one is going to be almost exactly the length that we need. Any shorter and I'd have to go make a new one. So I want to point out that the shunt comes with brass bolts and everything you need including a brass washer, a brass lock washer, and a nice brass nut. These are solid and they are not going to corrode. So let's go ahead and connect that. So now we have the negative wire connected. What I'm going to do is I have a clamp here to hold these wires in place and I'm going to go ahead and release that clamp so I can run the communication wire. So I've ran the wire through the hole and bundle it up in the way that I want it and then along with the other cables up to my location where I'm going to install my panel. Now that this is complete I'd like to tighten this up but I'm gonna wait to do that until the very last that way I'll be able to get all the slack cable together and I might even zip zip tie them together in a bundle. We don't need this inside the box anymore because that area is pretty much complete. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll install this and I just have to take four screws apart and then put four screws back together. So we'll take a quick break while I do that and then we'll be right back. So we've got this all completely attached now and it's solid and then I have the cable zip tied in there. I'm going to show you a picture of the box and I hope that you can see everything in there. We've had uh, sunlight coming and going so I wanted to get it all done in the morning, but because of a couple of little hiccups, it slowed me down a little bit. So here's the panel. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in the communication cable. Just wanna plug it in real carefully. Now everything that you need to know is in the manual here, but it doesn't go into great detail. So there's a little bit of assumption for what you want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the capacity. Now I had this set for my test and it was set at 60. We're going to change that to 100. And the reason is, is because this 24 volt battery is a 100 amp hour battery. Now we never want to use that much and it probably will shut off before then, but we would like to know exactly where we're at. I'm going to set the alarm at eight amps. Now the battery should kick off somewhere around two amps, but eight amps, the alarm will go off. Then I will know to come over and switch the battery switch to my backup battery bank. So I'm going to take a picture of that. And I'll go ahead and pop that right up there. So everything is done here. So all I need to do is clean up the mess and put away my tools and we're done for the day. Um, this is a really cool looking monitor and I'll be able to check everything here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to um, cycle the system and reset it. That way it goes back up to 100%. So if you saw anything you like, there is links below that are affiliate links. Also, there'll be a link to a couple of articles that are related to these products, including the batteries and the inline fuses. And we'll try to get articles for the rest of the items up there too. So hopefully that explained everything. And if there's something that you want to know or something that I forgot to mention, mention it in the comments. And if I know the answer, I'll be glad to help. Have a great day.